In this video, you're going to learn about linear equations that have no solution and linear equations that have infinite solutions. So what I've put up here on the board are kind of the three cases we run into when we're solving linear equations. The first one is the one that we're most, is most typical and the one that we're, most, that we're most familiar with. And that is an equation that has one solution. So I've written a very simple equation here, 2x equals 10. When we go to solve this equation, we would divide both sides by 2. And we find that our solution is x equals 5. And that ind indicates that 5 is the only number that's going to be a solution to this equation. And so it might surprise you that there are equations out there that have no solutions to them and also equations that have more than one solution to them. Let's take a look at case 2 here where we have no solution. And again, I've made a real simple equation here so that it's easy to see that this equation isn't going to have a solution. Notice I have on the left side of the equation x plus 1 and on the right I have x. This is not going to work no matter what value of x I plug in because the left side is always going to be one larger than the right side. So for example, if I put a 2 in here, on the left side I have 2 plus 1 is 3, and 2 on the right side, it's not going to work. And if you check a couple numbers here, you're going to quickly see that, hey, there isn't a single number that's going to work in this equation. So this equation has no solution. Moving down here to case 3, where we have infinite solutions. Again, I've written a really simple equation so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, x equals x. It doesn't matter what value I plug in for x, it's going to work. If I put a 2 in here, it's going to have 2 equals 2. If I put a 10 in here, it's going to have 10 equals 10. If I put 2.53 in for x, I'll have 2.53 equals 2.53. So there's an equation that has an infinite number of solutions. And now when I kind of break them down in this really simple form, it's easy to see that yes, this one's going to have 1, yes, this one's going to have no solution, and finally case 3, we're going to have infinite solutions. Well, what you're going to have to do is be able to recognize when you're solving an equation when one of these three cases comes up. This one is pretty easy. You've worked with this lots of times. You're going to be comfortable seeing this. These two here, some weird stuff is going to happen when we go to solve, and you need to recognize that and identify that as either a no solution case or an infinite solution case. So let me go ahead and solve these equations, and we'll kind of see what happens as I go to solve these equations. So let's first solve this case two where we have no solution. Well, I would go to this problem and I'd say, well, all right, I have variable terms on both sides of my equation, so I need to get rid of or remove the smaller variable term. Well, they're exactly the same, so it wouldn't matter which one I got rid of. So let's uh, get rid of this one over here. So I would subtract x on this side, do the same thing to the other side, and let's take a look at what we have. On the right side now, I'm going to have x minus x is 0, so I have 0 on the right side. Over here on the left side, I'll have x minus x again is 0, so I'll still have this uh, plus 1 on this side. And so what has happened now, and this will happen every time we solve a, an equation that has no solution, is the variables are going to drop out entirely. Notice there aren't any more variables in my equation. And I'm left with an untrue statement, 1 equals 0. That's not true. So anytime you're solving an equation, variables drop out, and we're left with an untrue statement, you know that we're going to have no solution to this equation. So I would get down to this point in my equation, I'd say, oh, wait a minute, there's no solution to this one. Okay, let's take a look now at case three, infinite solutions. Well, again, I have variables on both sides of the equation, so I would go to get rid of the smaller one, and again, they're both the same. So let's just subtract x on this side, subtract x on this side, take a look at what we have left. On the right side, x minus x is 0. On the left side, x minus x is 0. So again, all of the variables drop out. But notice the difference between a no solution case now and an infinite solution case. When I have an infinite solution case, I have a true statement. 0 does equal 0. So when you're solving an equation, variables drop out, and I have a true statement, now we can say, aha, that means that both of these sides of the equation were exactly the same. And we call this an identity for that reason, because the left and the right side of the equations are exactly the same. So we are left with a true statement. So that means I have infinite solutions in that case. So that's what I would write as my answer there. And in a no solution case, I would write that as my answer there. OK, so we learned math by doing math. So I've given you two problems here for practice. Go ahead and pause your video player and solve each of these equations. And when you get to a point, now one of these equations is going to be a, a no solution equation, and one is going to be an infinite solution equation. So go ahead and solve these equations. And as you're solving the equation, when you get done solving them, 
go ahead and hit play on the video player and watch me work them back to you to see how you did. Okay, first equation I'm giving you, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to simplify this right side would be the first step. So I would distribute that too. So I have 6x minus 2 is equal to uh, 6x minus 2. And right now, if you recognize this, notice both sides of the equation are the same. So if you recognize right now that these are the same, you know this is an identity equation and we're going to have an infinite number of solutions here. If you didn't recognize that, we would continue to solve. Okay, so I'd say, okay, variable terms on both sides. So I'm going to get rid of the smaller one. Well, they're both the same. So it doesn't matter which one I subtract. So I'll subtract 6x from each side. Notice now the variable terms are going to drop out entirely. And I'm going to be left with this statement. Negative 2 equals negative 2. When I have variables drop out and I have a true statement, that means I have the same thing on each side. And when I have the same thing on each side of an equation, it means I have infinite solutions. Okay, let's take a look at the second equation. Uh, again, some stuff to simplify here. So I would distribute the 4. So 5x minus 7 equals 4x minus 8 plus x. Still some stuff, some like terms to combine on the right side. So let's see, uh, 5x minus 8. Okay, now I have variable terms on both sides, so I'm going to get rid of the smaller variable term. Well, they're both the same. So I'm going to subtract 5x from each side. And notice now again, the variables drop out entirely, except now I'm left with an untrue statement. Negative 7 is equal to negative 8. So that tells me that there's going to be no solution to this equation. So again, just to recap, the equations you're going to encounter are going to have either one solution, no solution, or infinite solution. One solution you're pretty comfortable, you see those most of the time. When we're going to have an infinite number of solutions, we're going to be solving our equation, variables drop out, we're left with a true statement. That tells us infinite solutions. A no solution case, we're solving our equation, variables drop out, and we have an untrue statement. That tells us we have a no solution case.